Read by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The American Book of the Dog, G. O. Shields, Editor. Section 11. The Dachshund. The origin of the Dachshund is in doubt, our best authorities disagreeing as to the beginning of the breed. Some writers claim that he came from Spain, while the fact that no dachshunds exist there which can be traced back to Spanish origin places this statement in doubt. Other authorities claim the dachshund to be the oldest breed known, as carvings have been discovered on Egyptian monuments resembling the dachshund of the present day. I lean more to the theory that the dachshund originated in France, as the basset hound is known to be of French origin, and the two breeds have many characteristics in common. There undoubtedly exists a close relationship between the two breeds, as the contour of the forelegs and the paws in both breeds is identical. It has been proven that during the invasion by the French armies in the 17th century, the basset hound was first seen in Germany, while previous to that time we have no positive proof that the dachshund existed there. We may, therefore, reasonably suppose that by inbreeding of the basset hound in Germany since that period, the size of the breed has been reduced, thereby better adapting the dog for the purposes required of him in that country, but that by judicious breeding certain traits and qualities have since been developed which have established the dachshund in its present form. Suppose a hound set upon short legs, say from four to six inches high, with a long stretched body, and you have the outlines of the dachshund's appearance in brief. At the first glance, you see that he is intended for underground work, nearly all his muscular power being developed in the fore part of his body. The appearance of the dachshund is striking, and to those unacquainted with the breed, is such as to attract great attention. It has taken a long time for American observers to become accustomed to him and to learn to like him. There are two types of the dachshund, the hound and the terrier type. Both are of equal value and are most carefully bred. In the southern parts of Germany and in all England, the hound type is more generally found and is more popular, while in the northern part of the empire, the terrier type appears to be the favorite. Both types are used for one and the same purpose, both have the same characteristics, and it is only a matter of fancy as to which is the better. As soon as bench shows were introduced in Germany, the question, of course, sprung up as to which is the most correct type. But this question, up to the present day, is not decided, and probably never will be. Of late, the hound type seems to be in general favor at all shows on the continent, in England, and in America. I have always preferred the hound-like dog, as I consider him the best-looking one of the two species. I shall now give a detailed description of the hound type. Standard and value of points. Head and skull, value 12. Ears, 6.5. Jaw, 5. Chest, 7. Legs and feet, 20. Skin and coat, 13. Loin, 8. Stern, 5 body eight and a half color four symmetry and quality eleven total one hundred the head large resembles that of a hound with the exception that it is more wedge-shaped nose large and well developed black in dark colored dogs and flesh colored in reds mostly teeth very large showing two large fangs on lower and two on upper jaw Ears, long, high-set, and so thin as to show the veins, covered with short, silky hair. Eyes, the dachshund has beautiful, large eyes, full of expression, in dark-colored dogs, mostly jet black, in reds, a brown color prevails. Some red strains show black noses and jet black eyes, and this is not a fault. The head rests on a very strongly developed neck. Chest, no other breed of dogs shows such depth and breadth of chest as does the dachshund, the chest bone standing out of the body, and on a good specimen, the chest fills out nearly the entire space to or within an inch or inch and a half of the knees. The chest hangs so low as to be only from three to four inches from the ground. Legs and feet. 
the forearms strong boned and well muscled run inward so that they almost form a right angle with the lower extremities at the knees the legs come together and then are vertical for about an inch and from here the feet take a side and outward course and form the long and flat paws toes long and flat have very long claws which in black and tan dogs should be black and in reds a dark brown or black the white claw is a defect it is a question of great interest as to how the formation of such shaped legs originated or was developed it may have come from some freak of nature but if so it has been by careful breeding kept up and is now one of the most marked features of the breed the hind legs are longer than the fore legs, thus giving the long body an inward curve, commonly called saddleback. In nearly all good specimens, well developed dew claws can be found, but these are often removed as they are liable to annoy the dog a good deal when wading through crusty snow. The claws on these extra toes grow long and in a perfect circle, and should at least be trimmed, or else they grow into the flesh and cause the dog a great deal of pain body round long and lithe tail heavy at the root and tapering should be carried high as in the foxhound but under no circumstances should the tail be carried in a curve over the back which is a great fault color the most prevailing and most familiar colors are black and tans chestnut and tans and solid reds from a fawn color to a beautiful deep red besides these colors specimens are occasionally found of black white and tan color called in germany tiger docks or steel blue and tan a magnificent color but rarely seen skin exceedingly loose you may take hold of the skin on neck or back and raise it four or six inches it seems as if the skin were intended for a body twice the size of the one it covers the loose skin is a great advantage to the dog, as a badger or other animal, when attacking the dachshund, will get hold of a mouthful of skin instead of solid flesh, and the dog suffers no serious damage. No other breed of dogs shows this characteristic in such a marked degree. Coat. Short and thick. Here is the measurement of a dachshund that I consider as near perfection as has yet been obtained. Head, eight inches long length from nose to the root of the tail thirty three inches tail eleven inches tip to tip forty four inches height at shoulder ten to ten and a half inches girth of body behind forearms nineteen and one half inches girth of neck fourteen and one half inches spread of ears fifteen inches around main muscle of forearm five and one half inches chest from ground four inches weight twenty to twenty two pounds specimens of the terrier type are as a general rule much smaller and of lighter build than those of the hound type the difference in shape lies mainly in the head which in the former is shorter and more pointed or sharper toward the nose the ears are not so long the legs are slightly straighter in weight specimens of the terrier type vary from ten to sixteen pounds it makes no difference however whether you send a large or a small dachshund after a fox both varieties are equally savage and ferocious in their attacks and the pluck and grit they exhibit deserve our greatest praise and admiration much has been written of the spiel dox or toy variety of the dachshund in former years he was valued by the ladies in germany as the pug is at the present day in this country the spiel dox was nothing else than a terrier dachshund that by inbreeding was reduced in size he is now rarely met with but could at any time be reproduced the long-haired dachshund is a variety which has become popular of late occasionally a puppy is whelped by a smooth-coated mother which shows longer hair than the rest of the litter by mating such specimens with others of their kind the long-haired variety was established the wire-haired dachshund also a fashion of later years undoubtedly originated by introducing the blood of the scotch terrier the disposition of the dachshund is peculiar he will seek a quarrel with any dog he may meet the larger in size the more he seems to enjoy it he will go up to the largest mastiff with tail erect and snap at him 
does the mastiff show a desire to fight the trouble begins at once and will not end until one or the other has had enough and seeks safety by flight the dachshund seldom runs and in case he finds his opponent's strength superior to his own he will lay on his back and snap at the larger animal from below thus often doing a great injury in addition to his quarrelsomeness he is the most independent dog in existence and he generally does what he pleases he will not obey even his own master and all the punishment you may give him will not make him obedient could this great fault be overcome he would make the hunting dog par excellence for he is untiring possessed of the greatest endurance has scenting powers and good will for hunting he will do no training and has all the good qualities a sportsman could reasonably ask a dog to possess except that of obedience this trait of following his own instinct when hunting and not minding his master's commands allows us only to use him on game living underground as fox or badger or on such game as when pursued can be brought to bay or be treed then the dachshund will stay and by giving tongue will in this way guide his master to the game the dachshund is full of faults but his great excellences his unparalleled courage and endurance stand so high to his credit that all deficiencies are overlooked and the breed kept up by the most judicious breeding it is the pride of european sportsmen to own courageous specimens of the dachshund and as long as the fox follows his instinct to destroy game the dachshund will be bred and used to check his ravages never leave any furs within reach of the dachshund for he will tear them to pieces or at least damage them to a great extent the tiger robe in your parlors or the fine seal jackets of the ladies of the house are in as great danger from being torn up as the raw coon skin which is nailed to a tree to dry in europe especially in germany the dachshund is principally used in assisting to destroy the natural enemy of all game the fox being about the same height as the fox he can follow him into his haunts and possessing the strongest muscular development and unparalleled courage he will fight his foe underground and chase him out of his burrow where he becomes an easy victim for the hunter who is stationed near the entrances a fox generally has more than one outlet to his burrow and a practical hunter uses a dog for each outlet the brave little dogs enter at once and give tongue when assured that reynard is at home the fox thus attacked cannot escape their sharp teeth and no matter how bravely he defends his life he cannot resist such a fierce attack and is bound to run for his life or be exterminated and often pulled above ground when a single dog undertakes the difficult task of driving out the fox he will certainly find an equally brave foe and many dogs lose their lives in this way a hunter who loves his dog will not send him alone against a fox equally as much as for driving foxes out of their burrows the dachshund is used for hunting the badger this animal does not try to save his life by flight as the fox does but will stand his ground and will fight the battle with his enemies underground when attacked he retires to the kettle or his lair into which all gangs center and here he receives his antagonists the dachshunds and defends his life with the greatest bravery the fight may last for hours in most cases the dogs are victorious but often the fight will not come to an end and to finish the work the hunters are obliged to use pick and shovel to dig down and fork the badger by laying the ear close to the ground to listen to their dogs barking the badger's whereabouts are easily located and the work of unearthing with the shovel begins the nearer the hunters get to the badger the clearer they can hear their dogs now one man watches with the fork which is a spear-like instrument and the minute the badger is seen the fork is put over his neck and he is caught you cannot hold the dogs back from finishing their foe the dogs now present a very different aspect from that shown when they entered eyes and ears red and full of dirt the tongue dry and hanging near the ground their breath short and quick and bleeding from the wounds made by their enemy make the dogs appear more like demons than dogs 
it is not seldom that when the badger is lifted up the dog whose teeth are set deep into his body hangs on to him and cannot open his jaws and it takes hours before the excitement is over and he has control of the muscles of his jaws again a great many have thus died of lockjaw one of the best dogs i knew lost his life in a singular way the badger managed to get hold of the lower jaw of the dachshund and literally bit it off lockjaw set in and the dog that had been victor in nearly fifty battles whose ears were nothing but fringes whose chest neck and whole body showed one scar near the other had to die every hunter within many miles felt this loss deeply for all these men looked upon this dog as upon a dead hero no matter how many wounds a dachshund has received as soon as he is in such shape as to be able to walk and bite again he is ready for another chase and he will fight fiercer than ever in europe it is the gamekeeper's duty to take care of the game entrusted to him and a fox destroys more game in a season than the average hunter kills having found the proofs that such a robber has made his home on his entrusted domain the forester has no rest until the intruder is exterminated has the fox made his home among the bluffs and rocks the hunter lays in wait until a chance offers to shoot reynard to simply shoot the fox in this case is more advisable than to risk the lives of valuable dogs who would certainly be in great danger as the nature of the bluffs and rocks filled with caves and crevices is such that the dogs in their endeavor to get at the game would be likely to fall into them in many cases the fox takes possession of an old badger hole the saying is that a badger who is a clean animal will leave his lair after a fox has deposited his manure there the badger mostly digs his hole in loose earth and if the fox is found on such ground the dachshund will be brought to act and this is the work nature has specially fitted him for the dogs are relieved of their collars that they may be able to use their body to the best advantage it is a grand sight to see a couple of dachshunds enter a foxhole chase the mother fox out of the ground and then go for the kittens which are brought out one by one dead of course every time this is a grand opportunity to teach a puppy a good lesson the german gamekeepers value these dogs about the same way as the arab does his horse they belong to the family and it is difficult to procure a serviceable dachshund from them when i was in germany selecting dachshunds for my kennels i looked for them among practical hunters to obtain the right stock i went along to see their work and ways of hunting found beautiful dogs but as soon as i offered their owners a price for them our friendship was nearly ended one incident i must mention here which happened in the woods of thuringen away from all travelled roads and deep in god's nature i ran on to a black and tan of such beauty and of such excellence for practical work as i had never before seen and i made up my mind to procure this specimen under any circumstances after we returned from a hunt and we were sitting in the gamekeeper's cabin talking of nothing but dachshunds of course i mentioned that i would like to buy peter from him the good-hearted man looked at me and said that dog you cannot buy at any price i am a poor man as everybody knows but as long as i have a bite of bread left peter stays with me well i never put the question to him again and i was assured that i could not offer peter a better home than the one he had the price offered for the dog was nearly equal to the gamekeeper's annual salary besides hunting foxes and badgers the dachshund is used extensively for tracking wounded deer and roebuck and no surer trailer lives the dog is taken by the line and he follows the track slowly but as infallibly as can be and it seldom happens that he fails to succeed when running loose he will give a few short barks when the game is found and then start at once to lick the wound then commence to eat and will eat until he cannot eat any more this is a bad habit but all dachshunds possess it but you must take these dogs as they are with all their good qualities and with all their many faults i therefore recommend the use of the line when tracking wounded game besides the above mentioned the dachshund can be used successfully to hunt minks and other vermin when allowed to run at will he will hunt anything from a mouse up 
now that i have illustrated the value of the dachshund for europe let us see what success we can have with him here in america for he is no more a stranger among us we have imported as fine stock as europe could produce though as stated we have had great difficulty in buying them and hundreds of them are now in the hands of practical american sportsmen many are dissatisfied with them others who know how to handle them praise their good qualities i have used them with great success in thick underbrush and briars where larger dogs could not work on rabbits and a few sportsmen stationed in the right way have found their chances for good sport excellent in deep snow when even the foxhound could not be of service i have brought my dachshund as a general rule only one and never more than a couple to new breakings where there were plenty of brush piles a favorite resort for rabbits don't let your dog follow you in deep snow and get him tired out before his work begins carry your dog in your arms or in the game sack he will enter a brush pile at once and in a minute's time you will know whether you may expect a rabbit here or not if he gives tongue you may with certainty expect a shot for he never barks before he is dead sure of the presence of game his scenting powers are the keenest and he does not make a mistake as i said before as soon as the dog barks be ready to shoot for the rabbit will be obliged to run when a dachshund is after him the dog works his way through the brush almost like a snake and will get to the rabbit sooner or later as soon as a shot is fired he will come out and follow the trail and in case the rabbit is missed will bring him to shot again should the snow be too deep don't allow him to follow for he is too small to work against deep snow take to the next brush pile and try your luck again in this way i have often shot from ten to twenty-five rabbits in half a day and on a comparatively small field when hunting with a pack of dachshunds you will notice the following as soon as unchecked all dogs will at once scatter and each will hunt for a trail by himself for a while you will not hear a sound from your dogs but as soon as one of them has scared up game he will utter a shrill sharp bark something like kiff 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 as soon as the rest of the pack hear this signal they will meet at once and chase the rabbit in a body under full cry they now act in the same way as a pack of beagles or foxhounds and surely bring the game around but should the rabbit go to earth your hunt for an hour or maybe for all day is over for the dogs will now follow their instinct and commence to dig for their game if the ground is not frozen or if no rocks interfere they will always succeed in pulling out the rabbit no matter how long it takes them to do it it is impossible to call the dogs away from this work often they stay underground for an hour at a time before they show themselves at the entrance the smallest dog goes to dig first a larger one is near to clear the loose earth out of the hole and you cannot see a more interesting sight than such a one the earth flies in all directions and in a very short time the dogs have dug their way in so far that you can hardly hear them bark small roots which come in their way will be gnawed in too soon you will notice a dog back out holding the rabbit and every dog that is near will want his reward by helping to kill it and if the hunter is not at hand to stop this performance the rabbit will be torn to pieces in less than ten seconds this is the great disadvantage in hunting rabbits with a pack of dachshunds if you see them at work in this way for the first time it will certainly interest you greatly but when accustomed to it you will pronounce it a bad interruption of your sport for this reason i say when you want to hunt rabbits with a pack of dogs use the beagle for he does not possess the desire for digging as does the dachshund when at work underground should you have an opportunity of preventing one or two dogs from entering you may chain them and take them miles away but the minute they are at liberty they will run back and finish their work you may wish to call them back but will not succeed and you will find that your control over your dogs ends right here three of my dogs once worked two days and a night at the same hole before they returned home there is one good thing about it and that is you need not be afraid of their getting lost they will find their way home under all circumstances i have had them on grounds ten to fifteen miles from my home in places where they had never been before but i could leave them there to finish a job of digging without fear of losing them 
they always return when ready how they manage it is a mystery to me unless by the use of their superior scenting powers they trace their return i have had hundreds of them but never lost a single one as to their value for tracking wounded deer i cannot do better than to repeat the words of mr n a osgood of battle creek michigan who owns the beautiful bitch gertie he says that while hunting deer in northern michigan it happened that several were wounded and could not be found among them the largest buck they had seen during their stay he was tracked by all the dogs they had with them but all gave up the hunt when the tracks ran to a stream after all the other dogs were chained up gertie trailed the buck alone and on reaching the stream plunged in swam across hunted up the lost trail on the other side and soon the well-known kiff kiff assured mr osgood of gertie's success and he states that no more wounded deer were lost after that time gertie of course became the pet of the camp another gentleman after returning from a northern hunt wrote me that his eight-month-old dachshund exhibited a great deal of pluck by holding his ground near a bear after several other dogs left the field by steadily barking and circling around the bear he held its attention until the hunter approached and killed it if you wish to hunt foxes or badgers the dachshund will perform the same work for you here as he does for your brother sportsmen in europe the dachshund can also be used for treeing partridges ruffled grouse or squirrels and as rat killers they cannot be excelled he is a capital companion for the man who enjoys hunting alone if you once gain his friendship he will do almost anything for you i can always tell what game my dogs are pursuing by their different ways of giving tongue and have become so accustomed to their ways and methods of hunting that i have never been misled by them but once in that instance they gave the bark i generally heard when a squirrel was treed only fiercer on walking up to them i saw lying flat on the limb of an oak tree a large wildcat i fired at her and had the satisfaction of seeing her fall among my dogs who covered her at once i soon discovered that she was far from dead and she proved as lively a corpse as could be imagined she defended what life was left in her valiantly my dogs were bleeding and the cat kept on dealing terrible blows upon them i could not shoot for i would have killed my dogs also when the battle was at its height i noticed one dog which weighed only eighteen pounds retire slowly while the two remaining ones were attacking the cat as furiously as ever all at once the little dog who had retired a minute before returned leaped suddenly from behind on the cat's back landing his teeth in the back of her neck the surprise was complete and in a second's time one of the other dogs caught hold at her throat and the fight was over the cat killed the little dogs that showed so much courage a few minutes before were all in terrible condition and as weak as could be from loss of blood as a watch or house dog the dachshund ranks high and i can almost pronounce him superior to any other variety he will notice the slightest noise the faintest footstep about the house and will give alarm he is kind to the members and friends of the family but as savage as a dog can be to an intruder he is an invaluable assistant to the farmer who can sleep safely when knowing that a dachshund watches over his property especially his poultry at night no mink coon skunk or other vermin will live long in his neighborhood this little dog will work day and night to kill these pests that nearly always infest farms where poultry is kept and which do so much damage if not checked by a good dog before closing this chapter allow me to mention the following it has been tried to allow a dachshund to run with a pack of foxhounds but was always given up as unsuccessful for the simple reason that the dachshund will not stand it to have a superior over him the leader of the pack and the dachshund will soon begin to quarrel and in the end the chances are that the small dog will kill the large one one of the most important rules for keeping a lot of dachshunds is to have plenty of ground for them as they do not thrive well in too close confinement have the yard divided in say three or four apartments but it will not do to have the fences go simply down close to the ground for you would not leave them ten minutes when you would find that the dogs had dug out and were enjoying a walk outside lay out the plan for your building and yards set the fence posts three feet into the ground dig trenches for a foundation as for a building two feet deep 
fill this full of large rocks cover all with earth then nail your boards on the posts don't use any boards with knot holes as the dogs will begin to gnaw at them and in time enlarge them so that they can go through them in this way i succeeded in managing my dogs all right with the exception of one who beat all my plans he dug a hole down under the rocks and up on the other side in about an hour and i thought it advisable to take him to my house for when the rest would have such an able teacher in their midst i could see no end of trouble when outside he behaved well for a while but soon he got a desire for a hunt in good company so he commenced to dig a hole from the outside and soon liberated all the dogs kept in the yard before i was obliged to build a stone foundation i drove sticks into the ground which were set as close together as i could set them this plan is no success as the dogs will dig all the earth away until the sticks stand free when they are easily removed by them the fence must be at least five feet high i here give the plan of what i consider a practical kennel for the breed ground required sixty by forty five feet kennel building to be fifteen by sixty feet have a hallway in the same say four by sixty feet the balance eleven by sixty feet divide into four apartments which will give each apartment the size of eleven by fifteen feet separate halls from rooms by wire netting lay the floors one foot from ground so as not to take too much dampness in wet weather and the floor must be laid slanting to allow the water to run off when scrubbing the floor benches to be one and a half feet from the floor but not under the window as the dogs would stand up and gnaw through the sash the balance of your ground should be divided into four yards so that each room of the building is connected with a yard fifteen by thirty feet the rooms as well as the yards must be so arranged that the dogs in one cannot see those in the other which is done by erecting tight board partitions or fences between them the outside fence may be of wire netting this will improve the appearance of your kennels the building must be light and well ventilated doors to be so arranged that you may enter your grounds from all sides from one yard to the other and from the yards to the rooms if wire netting be too expensive you can of course build board fences instead a kennel of this description affords room for twelve to fifteen dogs it is not advisable to keep such a number in one yard for they will not agree and you must separate them in order to keep them from fighting if you don't you will find some of your dogs killed before long as a general rule two stud dogs are enemies and their hatred knows no bounds all tricks imaginable are brought to play to find some means of coming together and if successful one dog will be destroyed bitches when fighting seem to be even more savage than dogs when two of these are fighting you may lift one up and are sure to raise the other for when their jaws close on each other they hold fast and you can swing both around your head a dozen times still they will hold on to each other firmly separate them by taking a firm hold at their necks and choking them and as soon as loosened throw one over the fence these two will never after be friends often you may keep from six to eight dogs in one yard and have no trouble when admitting a strange dog to your kennels you must first find out in what yard you can locate him and be careful about this matter it would be cruelty to keep these dogs closely confined for their instinct drives them to hunt and you should give them as frequently as possible a chance to hunt or to run at least bitches in whelp ought to be at liberty to go where they please my kennels were located in the heart of a good game country and as soon as i opened the door of their yards my dogs had the chance to begin hunting at once dogs and kennels should be only in such localities rather let the dogs hunt once in a while on their own account than deprive them of their liberty for too long a time to take care of a dozen or fifteen dachshunds in the proper way is all a man is able to do half of the day should be spent in working them the balance is necessary to keep the kennels in good order my bitch gretchen well known to all dachshund breeders in the country when in whelp would hunt until the last day of her confinement once she was gone two days and i had no idea where she was her time to whelp was at hand half an hour after her return she gave birth to the first puppy and by morning a family of six had arrived 
she was an excellent mother but on the second day after whelping went on a trip again not returning until night all her puppies were brought up by their mother and all proved excellent dogs nearly all dachshunds enjoy robust constitutions and you will not be troubled much by diseases among them you must however keep your kennels and yards scrupulously clean or mange the terror of all breeders will be admitted to keep a lot of dogs in good health depends mainly on clean kennels plenty of exercise and on their being properly fed after trying different methods of feeding i pronounce the following the best raw meat is excluded mutton and beef scraps onions and beets and seasoning of salt are boiled until the meat falls off the bones this is mixed with oatmeal cornmeal or rice mush bread or mashed potatoes when fed warm to the dogs it makes the best meal and is very much relished by them but do not give the same thing day after day one day i mix the broth and meat with bread the next day with oatmeal and so on by so doing you will not see your dogs appetites fail and they will always be in first-class condition ready for the bench show at any day of the year boiled liver will do about once a week as it acts as a laxative pork given occasionally is all right if given too often it will produce mange feed your dogs twice a day once in the morning and the second meal just before dark as they will then be much quieter during the night don't allow any dishes with remnants of a meal to stand around your kennel yards wash the dishes as soon as the meal is over your kennels and kitchen must be in such condition at all hours of the day that you need not be embarrassed to show a lady through them give from three to four times a day a good supply of fresh water buttermilk once or twice a week is recommended i am opposed to chaining dogs especially dachshunds which thus kept will be too savage and musical when a bitch is due to whelp you will notice as a general rule that she favors a certain place and i always let her use her own judgment in selecting her bed for she will then feel more contented she will most always prefer to whelp on the bare ground and let it be your care that she is not molested by other dogs of course this does not apply to winter when she must be kept in a heated room a litter of puppies will afford you much pleasure as lively as crickets chasing and frolicking all day long their odd shape and intelligent ways will make them favorites with all when six weeks old i begin to feed them milk and bread and continue this diet for about a month then give them the same food as the old dogs eat the remedies that i found to be of value in the treatment of a few diseases i learned by years of practical experience in handling dogs i will simply tell you in what ways i conquered the many troubles that every kennel man is subject to the mange will appear in the best managed kennels and if not rooted out will be the cause of endless trouble many kennels have been broken up because the disease could not be eradicated when a dog shows the disease i separate him from the rest and he has to make his home in a small building put up for this purpose which i call the ash box the floor is covered with dry wood ashes the dog is now bound to walk on ashes will he lay down to sleep he will sleep on ashes kept for one or two weeks in this place you will find your dog well and the mange cured you must let the patient have exercise every day and it will be good to wash him once a day but be sure that he does not come too close to your healthy dogs i will tell you how i came to introduce the ash box i received a dog from europe that was covered with the disease all remedies that i tried failed to cure him he was in a horrible condition and after all remedies had failed i decided to shoot him when going to the woods intending to kill the poor animal i met a farmer whom i told of my intention and he requested me to let him have the dog to which i consented i had not heard from the man or the dog for several months when while hunting i came near his home and being anxious to find out how the dog was getting along started to his house i soon saw the dachshund coming towards me and was surprised to see him in the finest possible condition on inquiring how it was possible to have cured him the farmer said he had done nothing to him whatever but let him run wherever he wanted to and the first day he dug a hole in a pile of wood ashes and had slept there ever since 
it was at once plain to me that the ashes had acted as a remedy for the disease and i thereupon built an ash box with it i have cured every case of mange that has occurred in my kennels since and friends whom i have advised to use it on their dogs report the same results in severe cases you may take a sponge saturated with benzene and apply it to the sores before placing the dog on the ash bed worms ask your druggist for the common brown worm powder which is given to children seminsine pulver mix half a teaspoon of this powder in your puppy's food and you will be surprised what an amount of worms he will pass the next day repeat this once a day for three succeeding days and give a teaspoonful of castor oil about four hours after each dose is taken i know of no better remedy for distemper i give one of the distemper pills advertised in the sporting papers to such dogs as are over seven or eight months old i find it to be of good service and have cured many dogs troubled with the disease but when a litter of puppies say from two to three months old are attacked with distemper i have so far failed to find a successful remedy a good dry bed and a warm place to sleep is all i can offer them and i have to take my chances for their recovery fleas take a piece of linen saturate it with kerosene rub this backward against the dog's hair and you will see the fleas crawl to the tip of the hair at once and die now wash your dog with soap and water and when dry you will not find a single flea left to bother him sprinkle the floor of your kennels about once a week with kerosene lice common persian insect powder rubbed into the hair and the use of comb brush soap and water is what i have used to get rid of these pests the dachshund if well bred will not need any training and will follow his natural instinct in hunting teach him obedience when young and give him enough opportunities to hunt and develop the best method i have found is in building an artificial fox burrow in the yard for puppies made of rocks with three outlets from a larger place kettle in the center cover this with earth and brush catch a rabbit in a trap and liberate it in the presence of your puppies a puppy three or four months old will at once begin to chase the rabbit follow it through the holes or brush and rest assured will never forget this lesson do all in your power to develop courage the main characteristic of the breed don't punish the puppy when he has done an act you dislike many good dogs have been spoiled by misapplied punishment when the age arrives at which he should be used on game take a dog whose work satisfies you and the puppy you wish to introduce in field work and in a few weeks practice the puppy will do his work satisfactorily when you wish to buy a dachshund be sure to procure a puppy do not allow everybody to take care of him and to feed him let him know that you are his friend and master let him accompany you as often as practicable as soon as you notice the development of his hunting instincts try to give him a chance to catch and kill a rabbit you will then discover that your dog is on a steady lookout for them and in a short time will master all the tricks of the rabbit before he is fully developed do not allow him to fight a fox alone for he may receive a severe punishment at the beginning of his career which may produce bad effects for the future if by ill management you lose the dog's good will toward you you may be a first-class breaker of other breeds but the dachshund's strong-headedness you will never be able to subdue while on the other hand by kind treatment you may bring up a dog which is devoted to you and may make a useful companion of him without any trouble the same rules that apply to the breeding of other breeds will apply to the dachshund except in the matter of color in this breed you have black and tans chestnut and tans fallow red and deep red all distinct and eligible colors and you may cross for instance a black and tan bitch with a red dog or a chestnut and tan with a red one the results will always be a litter of puppies showing the above-mentioned colors distinct and true to type never a mixed color such as a black and tan dog showing a red spot on his back etc i have bred over six hundred puppies but never yet saw one which was not correctly marked i have bred reds to reds for generations have often received a litter of pure reds but you cannot depend on this as a rule for in the fourth or fifth generation a black and tan or a chestnut and tan puppy of perfect color and markings may make his appearance 
my advice is pay no attention to color but attend strictly to the other and more important qualities don't cross a hound type dachshund with one of the terrier type as you cannot expect a well-shaped puppy from such a cross the broad deep chest strong limbs and crook good head and ears well-rounded ribs and long-stretched body are the points you should breed for as the paws are used by these dogs as shovels i may say that in order to get the correct stock you should breed as big shovels on their legs as possible another important point to look to is the size a dachshund should not stand higher at the shoulders than ten and one half or eleven inches when larger they are too large to enter a foxhole and consequently are disqualified for the purpose nature has intended them for many specimens are overshot that is the teeth on the upper jaw stand out one-fourth or one-half inch farther than those of the lower jaw although an animal with such teeth may appear to have the most beautiful head imaginable he should be disqualified for breeding purposes a dachshund without any white markings is preferred to one which has such but should the dog otherwise be perfect i would not object to a little white on his paws chest or under the throat